Yo, folks, what's up? Avery Sports Show, livestream.com slash Avery Sports. Sorry for being silly. We had some really, really, really bad technical issues. We will try, We will call Mr. Gabriel Renzi right now. Bring him on for Avery Sports Show. I know Gabe hasn't been on the show in a very long time. So, I will call Mr. Renzi right now and see what he is up to. Do, 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 do. Let's do that. And of course, as we know, Gabe, the longtime host of Sports Rage, Hardcore Sports Radio, Team 990 Montreal, and now living in Vegas. He's back in Toronto now, so let's get Gabe on the line now. See what's shaking for the man of Sports Rage. She's absolutely fantastic as we pipe go, call him on the pipelines here on Avery Sports Show. Hey Gabe, what's up, man? It's Avery here. How you doing, Avery? Good, man. Good. Sorry about the issues, man. We it's been really bad for us tonight. I apologize for that, Gabe. No, no, no problem. I've had my share of telephone issues over the years, Avery. I understand, uh, but uh, you know, whatever the service uh, you're uh, you're working with wasn't working for you. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't, Gabe. But you know, Gabe, it's been a pleasure to have you on. It's been a long time since you talk. How's been living in Vegas? Been treating you, man. <laughs> It's all good, it's all good. I'm uh, easing my way back uh, into uh, Toronto. Uh, you know what, the darkness, it's like Gotham here, man. It's dark all the time in, in Toronto. Other than that, it's all right, it's not too cold. That's true. I still have a couple of Vegas trips left, so, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not fully done in Sin City yet, but uh, it's good to be back in Toronto. No, I can imagine, I can imagine. I know, Gabe, you've been down there for quite some time. You've, watched, you've been watching a lot of football. I know right now, NFL playoff time. It's the ASC NFC teams coming up this weekend here. And let me ask you, Gabe. Did you imagine seeing the Final Four teams of Baltimore, New England, San Fran, and Atlanta? I know I didn't have them at the start of the year <laughs> going to the Final Four games or Final Two games, sorry. No, I'm not, uh, I'm not surprised, uh, to be honest. Yeah, I did think the Green Bay, I thought the Green Bay, you know, could beat San Francisco. I'm not shocked uh, that they did it. And Baltimore was my pick to win the Super Bowl before the year started. Uh, I I didn't like the way they were playing, you know, late in the season, but we often see that. So, no, I'm not surprised about the teams that are left. I mean, truth be told, i got to be honest, uh, the Atlanta Falcons are a team that basically every week when I went to the Hilton in Vegas, I was always surprised. They were, they were always like 8-1 to one and 10-1 to one to win the Super Bowl. There were always teams ahead of them to win the Super Bowl. You know, all year I was bringing that up. The Falcons just don't get respect from the Lions makers, and they still don't. As you know, now the four-point underdogs on their home field. It's it's ever so rare, if, if ever. I mean, you know, one one disadvantage to being back uh, in Toronto. Still don't have my uh, my internet service uh, hooked up. I'm on my cell phone all the time, so I haven't looked at the numbers. Uh, but I can't imagine there's too many times that in the AFC Championship game or NFC Championship game that the, uh, the number one seed is getting points. I'm sure it's happened before, but with that being stated, I think San Francisco, uh, I think San Francisco is going to beat, uh, you know, will beat the Atlanta Falcons going to the Super Bowl. And, you know, as much as uh, the Harbaugh family would like to see the Harbaugh ball, and I like what Baltimore has done. And I, I don't know, I just I have a strong vision of uh, New England playing San Francisco in the Super Bowl. And, It'll be a huge Super Bowl if it's New England or San Francisco. East Coast, West Coast, Patriots, old school, you know, veteran championship pedigree versus the new young guns uh, from the West Coast in San Francisco. And I tell you, the, the, the television networks in the National Football League, uh, they won't be crying any tears uh, if, it's, uh, if it is San Francisco and New England. And actually, you know they don't want Atlanta and Baltimore. Atlanta and Baltimore, <laughs> that's nowhere near as sexy as San Francisco and New England. No, it isn't. Now, you mentioned with San Fran, I mean, early in the year, Alex Smith gets hurt, and for Harbaugh, to take a risk and stick with Kaepernick, I mean, a lot of people thought, what are you doing? Why don't you go back to Alex Smith? Right now, Harbaugh looks like a genius with Kaepernick because he's a guy, I mean, to be a quarterback and rush for almost 200 yards against Green Bay, that's unheard of, Gabe. Well, it'll be unheard of until next next year when Robert Griffin does it or somebody else does it. And you know, I'm getting tired of the, you know, the unheard of and the greatest stuff ever. 
you know, with, with these guys. It's a week by week basis, you know. RG three was the greatest quarterback in the history of the world. They were changing radio call letters for him and, and then his knee pops he's out of football game and the Redskins are watching on T V now, right? Sure. And Andrew Luck, same thing. Confidence good, you know, but you know, I to be honest, I think San Francisco could be here with Alex Smith. And in fact they were here uh, last year with Alex Smith. <laughs> you know, they were uh, in the NFC championship game with Alex Smith. Don't get me wrong, Kaepernick's a good football player. You know, I've been you know, I've been in tune with Kaepernick, you know, a hell of a you know, year. I've been betting and winning and losing money on Kaepernick years before any of these people ever freaking heard of him, maybe, all right? You know, I've watched Colin Kaepernick play a lot of football over the years uh, with the Nevada Wolfpack, so I knew, was, I knew he was as good as he was. And I remember last year, I heard some, some tool analyst guy talking about how Kaepernick doesn't get it, and, you know, this, the reporter was unhappy with him. And, you know, it's just that stupid stuff that you get from the mainstream media. But the Kaepernick, Kaepernick's a stud. He's a smart kid. He's not, he's not intimidated. But let's not forget, they made it to the NFC Championship game last year with Alex Smith. So it's not like Kaepernick saved this franchise. What Alan Kaepernick did, what, what Colin Kaepernick did, is take a very, very, very good football team and turn them into potentially a great football team. It's just one of these deals where I think San Francisco was good enough uh, you know, to get to the Super Bowl with Alex Smith, but they do have a better shot with Colin Kaepernick. He's just more dynamic. When plays break down, you know, Alex Smith's a pretty good uh, scrambler, but when plays break down, Kaepernick has that, that home run threat. The kid's smart, he's cocky, he's confident, he's in his own right now. And uh, I think San Francisco will be at the Atlanta Falcons. I have to agree with you, Gabe. I mean, what can Mike Smith do? Because if you let Kaepernick run, you're screwed. If you keep him in the pocket, his arm is good enough. He can find a Randy Moss. He can find a Vernon Davis. So what does Mike Smith have to do to make sure Kaepernick isn't a threat come, come this weekend, Gabe? What can the make well, Mike Smith do? Well, let's not forget, last week, Colin Kaepernick was 17 of 31. You know, so my math isn't great, but that's not 90% completion rate, all right? The guy is uh, hes not the most accurate passer. I mean, you know, I'd say settle down here on Kaepernick Avery. I mean, this is a kid that, uh, you know, lost to the Rams and tied the Rams, all right? right. That was True. Colin Kaepernick, too. You know, that's, everyone chill out and remember that. You know, that, how long ago was that? Oh, it was about three weeks ago only. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the kid's playing well right now, but, you know, he's, he's not the most accurate passer. Yeah. He's got a strong arm. But he's not the most accurate passer. I think what they'll try to do is they'll try to nullify the, the ground. They're obviously going to take away the running you know, option. You know, if they can take out, and everybody's running it right now. That's the whole thing in the National Football League. And it's working right now. I guarantee you next year it won't. It's the same thing as the Wildcat. This little new quarterback option read, they call it, which the quarterback rolls out, he can throw the ball, or he runs with it. And we saw, we see, they, they all do it. They, uh, Griffin lived on it this year, but then when his knee got hurt, he stopped. Topping it, Russell Wilson was his bread and butter. He pops it all the time. Uh, you know, Cam Newton does it. It's, it's the new thing. And trust me, in the offseason, and even it'll be interesting to see in a couple of weeks leading up to the Super Bowl, guys are going to start to figure out a way to take this away. And you force Kaepernick to make him into a pocket passer, make him throw the football. He's not mature enough to pull that off, but... San Francisco is just so damn good. And, 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 you know, the fact of the matter is you've got all these wide receivers that are wide open all the time. It's not like it's not like Kaepernick is throwing these balls and you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe he just threw that pass in between two <laughs> defenders. It's like, no, you know, hey, look, there's Vernon Davis. He's wide open. But, you know, hey, look, you know, there's, there's Crabtree. He's wide open. He's got a good thing going with Crabtree right now. He's a good quarterback. And, listen, Atlanta's a good football team, but... San Francisco are mentally tougher. San Francisco were in the NFC Championship game last year, and if they didn't mop a couple of punts, would have been in the Super Bowl. I think it's a, it's a growing process. Atlanta gets that playoff win. People can stop ripping them. It wasn't very impressive, but they did it. They won't get ripped as much. I just think San Francisco is hungrier, a stronger, more physical. But, you know, we saw what Atlanta did. You can't let – when I saw what Atlanta let – Seattle get back into that game. It was just flaky stuff that's not going to get it done. Harbaugh's a better coach than Mike Smith. They're going to the Super Bowl. The question is, are they, is it the Harbaugh Bowl or is it, uh, you know, the Brady Bowl? And I, I, I think it's, you know, I'm going to bet on Baltimore. I'll take the points, and I won't be shocked if they win. But, you know, Baltimore just seems to be snake bit with, you know, I don't know. They seem, it's weird. Like, Jim Harbaugh is on top of the world. Seems like his brother John 
things are just a little harder for him. And I think Ray Lewis is, uh, you know, party probably comes to an end this week. And, and ironically enough, probably in a heartbreaker. But I'll tell you one thing. This game, I think San Francisco not wins rather easily, but I think they, I think they go in there and sort of punch the Falcons in the mouth. And by the time there's five minutes left, San Francisco is just sort of running the ball and killing the clock. I think this Baltimore New England game is going to come down to the wire just did it, just like it did last year. They played earlier this year. Baltimore was crushing them, let New England back in the game a little bit. Um, you know, Baltimore won the football game. This is going to be a really close football game, but I just get the feeling that Brady and the Patriots get to the Super Bowl and play the Niners. I don't know, it'll be tough, but I mean, with the, with Baltimore and New England, do you think Joe Flacco is ready to take that next step? Because, I mean, everyone criticized Joe Flacco in Baltimore. He's not ready, he's not ready, but you have to give the kid credit because he went into Denver, a tough place to win on the road, and beats the Broncos. I mean, I think Joe Flacco is ready to get that extra win in my mind, Gabe. Well, I mean, uh, it's, it's not a case of, you know, the, the Ravens only go as far as Joe Flacco takes them. So the Ravens' defense isn't very good. That's their, that's their problem. Flacco's inconsistent. Mm -hmm. You know, but the problem with Flacco, Flacco's a good quarterback. You know, he's, um, I dare say, he's an elite uh, quarterback. He's an upper tier quarterback. But the problem with Joe Flacco is himself. Uh, and he, his, he overhypes himself. You know, it's like an artist that overhypes himself. Or uh, anybody. So, if you know, he's telling people that I'm the best quarterback in the National Football League. You're setting the bar in which it's, you're, you're not going to attain because you're not the best quarterback in the National Football League. So I don't think it's fair that, you know, I, I, I don't think it will be judged solely on Joe Flacco, no. uh, whether they win or lose or not. What in jury, Joe Flacco didn't drop the ball last year. Lee Evans did. You know, Joe Flacco hit Lee Evans, you know, between the numbers in the end zone, and Lee Evans dropped the ball. It wasn't Joe Flacco that stopped him from going to the Super Bowl. Is Joe Flacco a jerk? Yeah. Uh -huh. Is he a dislikable guy? Yes. Is he as good as he thinks he is? No, but he's still a damn good quarterback. No, uh, he, he is, Gabe. And then, of course, the defense. I mean, Ray Lewis, a guy who came back from what appeared to be, could have made career end there. You look at him in the divisional game, over 10 tackles in a wild card game. He comes back again, over 10 tackles against Denver. I mean, Ray Lewis has the ability to turn his game around, most definitely, and what could be his last game if Baltimore does fall to England. He's a guy right now who is motivated to end his career with at least one more title right now. And it's very impressive seeing Ray Lewis play like this right now, Gabe. Well, he's playing it out on the line, without a doubt. I, you know, I think the fact that he was injured helped him. Uh, he's got more energy right now. Um, but at the same point in time, I, uh, this can only go on for so long. It's been a nice story uh, for Ray Lewis. And last week against the Denver Broncos, and I tweeted this during the football game, and I said, listen, the, the, the zone is killing them. Like, uh, the Denver Broncos were really dropping back, and they were really, really scared. To, uh, the Ravens were scared of the Broncos' deep game. They didn't let it, you know, and that's why it was frustrating Peyton, because Peyton kept looking down the field, and nothing was there. So he kept dinking and dunking you know, over the middle of the field. I swear, about 15 of his completions were for like 8 yards, 7 yards over the middle of the field. It, it was working. It was just, in Baltimore, were scared. And the reason the Baltimore were scared and during the, and in the second half, the cornerbacks and the linebackers did a much better job, along with uh, John Fox being an idiot and getting all conservative. But they did a much better job, you know, pressing up. But the fact is, the reason they were doing that is because they don't have a pass rush. They know they don't have a pass rush. And the Ravens, you know, they're aware. You know, they, they're, they're a smart team. They're an older team. So they, the Ravens are smart enough and mature enough to admit their weaknesses to themselves. And that's why they weren't. They, couldn't, they knew they couldn't get a pass rush on Manning, so they weren't even trying to blitz. They've had, they've had quarterback, issues, quarterback sack issues all year long, Avery. They just don't have a pass rush without a healthy throw. Sucks. They're aging on the line. They just don't have that guy to get after the quarterback uh, right now. And the only way you beat the New England Patriots is either, A, you outscore them, or you really get in Brady's face. And that's what the Giants do. So, well, you know, if the Giants played anyone else in the Super Bowl, they'd probably lose. But, you know, they get after Brady. They, and Brady gets intimidated, like uh, the Texans in the second half last week. You know, Brady wasn't having a good time at all, man. He was throwing the ball away quickly, had happy feet. If Gary Kubiak wasn't such a bad coach, the Texans could have won that football game. They did a great job defensively. Why? Because the Texans can get after the quarterback. And it really, really affected. How many times did Brady just sort of dump it off, like, throw it into the ground. He didn't want any 
big part of it. And I don't know if the Ravens can get there. So I think the Ravens will have to win a high-scoring game because I don't think they're going to stop Brady. But conversely, I do believe that San Francisco has exactly all the tools. San Francisco's defense is mean, man. You know, they're nasty. They're aggressive. They can get after the quarterback. Their linebackers can cover tight ends and wide receivers. You know, Patrick Willis and these guys, they're not going to be scared of Gronkowski. Uh, they're more physical than the New England Patriots are. I think the New England Patriots are a great matchup for the San Francisco 49ers. The 50 Atlanta Falcons versus the New England Patriots, the Patriots will smash them. The Patriots will win the Super Bowl. You know, if it's the Baltimore Ravens versus San Francisco, man, that's going to be a crazy game. You know, low score and close game. There's a lot of different ways this plays out. But ultimately, I think it will be the New England Patriots and the San Francisco 49ers in the Super Bowl. And I think San Francisco will beat the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl. All right, Gabe. That'll be most definitely interesting. It's great talking to you about your NFL expertise. You're an expert in that form. I know, Gabe. Coming back to Toronto, I know you don't hear about it as much in Vegas. But what do you think about the Angel lockout finally being done and teams finally getting back on the ice? I know you've been a guy. You've been kind of tired of hearing about hockey, but... I'm sure you're happy in a sense that it's back to, you know, it, uh, hockey is back somewhat now with the NHL returning in a form to Canada and to the U.S. Well, I'm, in, I'm intrigued, you know, because the season isn't so long. Right. So, you know, I'm waiting for the playoffs. Basically, I think the regular season is just going to be a train wreck. I guess <laughs> some guys have been playing in Europe. But, you know, I mean, they're going to have the excuse, well, there's no training camp. Oh, it's short in hockey. Yeah, we're still charging max prices. The NHL can go screw themselves. Uh, but, you know, in, in reality... I am looking forward. Like, you know, I don't, I don't care about the game this Saturday. Like, I'm not like, oh, I can't wait for, you know, the Leafs and the Canadians are playing great. Whatever. But what I am looking forward to is the fact these teams, you know, they're playing 48 games. It's probably going to take about 15 games, you know, 10 games, 15 games to start hitting their stride a little bit. And you know, what I like about it is, team, you know, a team like the Detroit Red Wings won't be as injured after 48 games. Maybe Crosby, you know, will be refreshed as well. And conversely, Maybe some of the lower tier teams can get hot and, and actually have a chance to make the playoffs as well. So there are some intriguing storylines here, but I think the hockey is going to be terrible for the first month or so. It'll be interesting. Of course, the injuries, in a sense, will be there more so because there'll be a lot of guys who, you know, who haven't played as much and there'll be more groin injuries. I don't know if you saw or not, but there was power rankings, Gabe, that came out by a guy by the name of Adrian Data who writes for Sports for uh, Sports Illustrated. It's, it's having a lot of talk here in Edmonton and, and across Canada. He has his top three teams to start the year. He has the Penguins, the Rangers, and then Edmonton. I mean, here, we're all wondering, wow, that's very interesting. The fact that he has Pittsburgh, New York, and then Edmonton is top three ranking. But you know what, though? I'm not really I'm not really surprised by that kind of rankings, how people are talking highly of the kids here in Edmonton, Gabe. So. You're really not surprised by that ranking. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I, I think... Guess, I don't know what, what I guess Sports Illustrated wanted to pop in Canada. So they figured, what's the most ridiculous hockey statement that they could make? Well, how could the Edmonton Oilers be the third best team in the National Hockey League? Like, you know, they could be Avery. They could but be. But I guess, I guess the Charlotte Bobcats can win the NBA championship this year, right? They're not mathematically eliminated. No, they aren't. Like I said, though, but what is the Oilers team game? In my mind, you have Yakupov, Hall, Hopkins. They're a team that has a lot of flash. In a 40-game season where you don't have time to fall off the cliff, Anything could happen. They could be that team that gets in as a seventh or a sixth team, or really to shock the world in a shortened season game. So, that's what we can see in yeah, that they could. they could. Well, you know, you know, they should. You know, otherwise, you know, people should be getting fired out there. Like, <laughs> how many first round draft picks do you guys need? Ten? You need ten, <laughs> ten years in a row, the number one pick. You know, to build the team. Like, uh, so you know, I'll believe it. You know, I'll believe it when I see it. it with the Oilers, a lot of young talent on that team. Horribly defensively, you know, maybe we're going to get some better goaltending. Um, you know, anything can happen here, but like you said, this is, you know, it's, it's a shortened season, and uh, I, I think some weird things will happen. I think there will be some strange things that will happen this year, but when it's all said and done, you know, it's hard still to go from worst to first, right? Right. Even, you know, and, you know we'll see. We'll see. You know, I'm, hey, listen, I'm not an Edmonton Oilers hater and like yeah. that. I got no problem with the Oilers making the playoffs, but I think they're going to be in tough. It'll be interesting, Gabe. And of course, Gabe, before I let you go, I know you've been doing a lot of big things, doing more stuff with sports rage. I know you've been saying how new website coming, and you saying on Twitter, a new book in March. I don't, what can you tell us about the website and possibly your book, Gabe? What can you tell us about that stuff you have for the rest of 2013? What's going on with you, Gabe? That's right. We have a lot of projects in the works starting here in 2013. 
couple of deals in the works uh, right now that uh, we're working on. And, uh, you know, we've been talking about the book for a long time. And, uh, you know, basically, you know, the timing was never really right. You know, it just never really felt right uh, to do it. But, uh, you know, it just feels right right now. Uh, you know, the timing has never been better with, uh, with Amazon.com and, you know, self-publishing and everything, you know, with the new, the new media world, you know, out there. You know, we're not going to be charging forty nine ninety nine for the book or anything like that, but there'll be some funny anecdotes uh, in there, you know, from uh, my days in Hollywood uh, to, you know, in my, uh, you know, decade-plus uh, year career in this sports industry. I'll give, so I'll give people some behind-the-scenes stuff, and some uh, stories that they've never heard before. And, you know, you know but truth be told, you know, anybody who listens to the show every night, and at least has been for, you know, 11 years now, you know, they know most of the story. So it's not like, you know, too many shocking revelations. There's a few things in there that I'm going to drop. But, you know, I was, I was all gung ho to, to really go crazy. But, um, you know, after analyzing this, I've got to be careful. Because I'm not going um, to make enough money to defend the lawsuits. So, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a few stories that I was considering putting in there. Then I realized, you know, for the little money that I'm going to make off of this, which is nothing, it's not really worth me, you know, having to go to court and stuff. So <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to run a few ideas past an attorney or something like that and find out just what is what is liable and what isn't liable, and then we'll move forward from there. Nice, nice. A new website, a new website. Given you want to put some more content back on your site, more shows. Like, what what do you have in work for that for your new site, Gabe? When you when you're back in Toronto full time. Yeah, well, you know, we basically wanted to get back to what we were, you know, what our what our mission and our agenda was, you know, earlier on Morency Sports, it's, it's, you know, it's, it takes a lot of time. It's the problem. It's not something that, you know, that I have a lot of. Uh, but you know, I would, you know, I like to get other shows and, you know, have a full, full, you know, full day of programming, not 24-7 basically, but, you know, a nice solid chunk of programming like we had before. You know, we had your show. We had the Craig Ballard on. You know, we've got a couple other projects, a couple other shows, and a couple other guys out there that are uh, that are very good at what they do. We want to get them on, uh, you know, get Rockamaniac uh, on with his, his wrestling. Pretty much cover all the issues. You know, the fact is, you know, we bitch about mainstream media, but it doesn't get any better. And it's not getting any better. Like, you know, and don't expect, you know, you tune in TSN radio, you know. Don't expect to laugh out loud at anything. You know, you might get, you know, a boring hockey interview now and then, and, you know, some little hockey information, but, you know, the mainstream media sucks so much, and, you know, it's up to people. People can complain all they want about how they don't like the mainstream, but, you know, there's so many, you know, you're providing people with an alternative right now, so it's up to us to provide them with an alternative, not just bitch about it. So I sort of want to put my money where my mouth is, and at least for everybody that says, oh, Peterson sucks, and Score sucks, and Roger sucks, and, and all that type of stuff. You know, I want to give them something. Well, you know, like that, you know, maybe you like this. You know, it's a tough, it's a tough, uh, you know, the Internet's a tough world, man. It's a jungle. It's hard to make money uh, on the Internet. You know, it's, it really is. So it's got to be a, a business model that's going to, uh, you know, that's going to, you know, work in the long run. So, you know, we're kicking around some ideas right now. Nothing happens overnight, but uh, pretty much after the Super Bowl, is when we'll, uh, we'll, you know, pretty much go full full throttle with this. I still got to go back to Vegas. We still, I got to lose some loose ends. We got a couple of things still to wrap up before we, we take the next step. But, uh, you know, February and March, man, that's, uh, you know, we're going to be stepping up big time. New new stuff on the horizon. Nice. Sounds fantastic, Gabe. And as always, man, thank you for doing this one more time. You've been on my show many times. I've been on Sports Rage often. Great talk to you again, Gabe. All right. Always good, Avery. Thanks for the invite, man. Thanks, Gabe. Talk to you soon, man. Gabe Morenci, Sports Rage, fantastic stuff. One of the true legends in sports media here in Canada. Uh, it's great to talk to him. We didn't have him on for quite some time, so it's great to get him back on. One of the big influences on my career, chill guy. Gabe, to some, may seem scary, but he really isn't. Anyway, folks, we'll come back with more. We'll see if we can get Jim Prince Bay on because we just had a lot of issues. I apologize to that. This is Avery Sports Show, the webcast on livestream.com slash Avery Sports. Stay tuned. <laughs>